Good afternoon. How well practiced are we? Are we on? Have we got the big rat on? Are we live? Are people here? This is episode 167. I think we're good. 167 attempts at this, and we're still getting it right. We always we try went, to get right? perfection. How we're organized are we this week? We were pretty organized. We were pretty organized until five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> and then it all fell apart. No, it's all good. We're good. good. We're good. I think everyone's here. Who have we got in today, mate? We've got Craig Jones. Hello. Hey, Craig. Anthony is on. Fantastic. Welcome Thunder in. Turbine on every week as well. That's good. We've got some regular viewers. That's it. Retro Rob. Retro Rob's in. The Wombat. We were just talking about the Wombat. Ah, oh, I hope he's been well. Yes. He's recovered. That's right. Hey, it's a big day the other day, yes. poor little fella. Felicity, hello. Hey, Felicity. And who else we got here? Gavin Webb. Webby. Gavin Webb? Yep. Uh, I wanted to speak to Gavin Webb. I wonder if his parcel arrived today. And and, and Jeff's on. And Jeff's on. <laughs> he's win. around somewhere. Can't win. Can't, he's never where you want him to be when you want him to be there, could is be, he? Could be his brother. Who knows? Probably, All right. probably stand plugged into a wall somewhere. <laughs> and the news agents. There you go. Congratulations. Welcome, everybody. Like we said, this is episode 167. How good is it? Let's go through some of our regular segments, shall we? Regular. What is this? What do we need to know? Make. Model. Color. Yeah. That was very dramatic, that pause. I don't have anything else. Oh, we weigh it. Oh, Oh, that's right. We need the weighing machine. I don't know that we can. I think we might be... um, I don't know oh, the weighing machine was on its way out, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think we rectified that. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe we'll give that another another day. We're going to have to get some um, some energy means for it. Don't tell Australia Post. <laughs> what? I didn't say anything. That our weighing device may, may or may not be we, weighing. We may or may hey? not have a, a spare. That's right. That's so right. there we go. We can't right. transport that one. Okay. We have lots of things happening. We have lots of things today. So lots got, of things happening this weekend. We've got a special guest in. We've yes. got lots of things this week. We did lots of things last week. Yes. And we've got some crazy new stuff in. That's it. And we're going to talk about something happening in the future as well. So what do you want to get started with? Well, why don't we get started with our special guest? Let's get our special yes. guest in. All Come right. on in, Lachlan. No, just you, mate. Just you. You're not getting railroaded into hey, this Lachlan. one. Hey, Lachlan. How are you? G'day, guys. Welcome in, Lachlan. And Lachlan is of the Bendigo on-road radio control car club it's a mm-hmm. mouthful, that is quite a mouthful <laughs> commonly referred to as bork bork <laughs> even better a little, a little <laughs> even better yeah and lockland's visiting us today um he's been stitched up <laughs> Some... to be the uh the club president over 2023 slash 2024 so congratulations mm, on well your Thank you. appointment and said stitching up um, you've got a wonderful committee behind you, mm-hmm. and I look forward to Hearn looks forward to being a part of the club in the coming year at least. It's a very healthy club. It's a great club. Mm. Um, I was up there what just a few weeks ago. It feels like when we did the junior development day. Like mm. my kids are still talking about it. Yeah, oh, wow. that's good. So it it um it came away nice. It was a wonderful day, blessed with weather. We've already seen the pictures and everything, but it was really nice to be in touch. I got a, such a nice sense of community amongst the Bendigo on road club that you just don't find that well I don't think I've been to another club that has such a sense of community mm. um, and really nurtures the the juniors and their experience of RC racing and it's really you know? important because they're the future of the absolutely yeah yeah and I know it's very dear to Lachlan's heart and I think the club is in a great shape moving forward with that you know as a backbone mm. so that's really good now, the other reason that Lachlan's here is not just to say congratulations to him, but it's to talk about the upcoming 2023 mm-hmm. Bendigo Classic. That's it. What's well, the Hearns Hobbies Bendigo really? Classic, isn't yes, it? Yes. We'll call yes. it our own. We'll make it our own. Yes. We had it painted Yokomo yellow. Yellow. Right. yellow. Yokomo Yellow. <laughs> well, next next year we're going to just officially rename it the Yokodo. Until then, we'll just unofficially call it that. That's right. No. Yeah. So, Bendigo Club. The Classic was an absolutely astonishing event last year. Very memorable. We had entry caps at 130. Mm. It was a sellout. It was mm. practically yep. a sellout, wasn't it? There was like four positions left but yeah, across that's the whole day. Arguing about it, that's for sure, yeah. That was really, really good. So we've put another class in this year, haven't we? So we that's yep. gone Not up to pro. 140. Mm. So let's see if we can get it closed out again. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be real good. Um, so what's the additional class that you guys have decided to run this year? Can I do this? You can do oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we got props. We got we props. Um, Kai Show Pro. We've Kai had Show it this Pro. Year. Okay. Um, it's a good fun class, and the guys like the fact that they don't have to do a lot to them. I think. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate, and it's going to rest a lot easier with me racing the Kyosho class, knowing that I'm just not, you know. Beating up on the newbies effectively. Yeah. How, how does yep. pro differ from the other existing classes? No, nah, it's just old flogs that want to drive. Oh, so it's, it's like exactly, it's exactly, exactly the same car, yeah, exactly the same rules, just yep. old flogs. Yep. Oh, okay. Easy. Well, no. <laughs> People with a couple of years' experience right. or not, not newbies. You know? yeah, I'm always known as pros. So essentially, anyone that's entering a touring car class with classic will, right. if they want to run Kyo Show as well, if they're cross entering. So, oh, yeah. okay. So obviously, so, they're, they're quite seasoned and they're not like beginning yeah yeah because a yeah. lot of people race phaser as a fun second class yes. you know but they're obviously quite experienced or fast yes. and you know yeah. it's yes. not always in the kyosho phaser class as best interest to have yes. these pros in it you know upsetting people yeah. and i'm i'm guilty of that but um at least i do it with a smile on my face <laughs> that's right you know <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. no but that's really good so you've introduced that so mm -hmm. we're actually i was looking at the the classes for the event um and there's three Kyosho phaser classes. That's right. Yep. Mm, so junior. how cool is that? So you're gonna have junior, mm -hmm. yep. Um, gonna have adult, yep. and then you're gonna and have pro. pro. Yep. So that's really cool. And that is 10 per class, is it? Is that gonna be capped at 10 per class? Uh, uh, so that's 30 yeah, I entries. Think the, I think the adults might be 20. Really? Yeah. So that is 30 or 40 entries just there yep. for that class. And you'll probably get it because you get that many sure. on a club day. I look yeah, really good right. going around. The spec classes are some of the more exciting ones to watch. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And the reason I enjoy it is just, they're so easy as far as your time constraints during the day. They allow you just to do very little other than charge your battery. Yep. If you charge your battery, you might give it a dust off. You might mm. you might rotate the tires or just check the wheel nuts, and that's it. You put a fresh battery in it, and you go again. That's, that's all you have to do to it. You're not allowed to use goo. You're not allowed to use warmers. Um and that's to keep it, you know, obviously safer for, for the juniors, less intimidating and also cost effective. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yep. So that is really, really good initiative by the club. So we've got that, those fun classes, we'll call it fun classes, and mm -hmm. we've got Tamir Truck. Tamir Truck. Yeah, which yeah. is, that's that's a class that's very close to your heart, absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Love that's, the trucks. That's your only <laughs> favourite. Yeah. I'm not that great at it, but I love them. <laughs> trucks are fun. No, you'll, be, you'll be contending with BJ again this year. BJ will be ba barreling around in the truck. Love it. Um, and then we've got 21.5 Junior. Yep. Again, which is aimed at the, the Junior's 21.5 PC guys. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then you've got 21.5, 13, and Mod. Oh, and TCR. TCR, of course. The yeah. Premier mm, class. TCR was we'll massive. TCR. Yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Well. You'll have to get in early TCR, guys, because we're not having 30 entries like we did last year. There'll be 20. So. 20, okay. entries. 20 entries. You heard it here first. And Fair the date enough. set is October 13th to 15th. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 13th right. is Friday. I'm lucky for some. No, it's not. It's the luckiest day ever. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be there. Yep. yep. And we will be doing another Hearns Live truck side. That's it. I like our on-location shows. Oh, definitely. Now, it's not school holidays, but... There could be a few school kids there kicking about, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we might be able to round up a few. Yeah, couple. Otherwise, it's just going to be all all oldies there cutting laps that will be annoying and, and trying to get <laughs> trying to get in. Hey. Yeah. So Probably. that is the Hearn's Hobbies Bendigo Classic 2023. So that is really awesome. And what what other points have you got for us today, Lachlan? Uh not heaps. No, um, not not heaps. <laughs> Uh, look, I'm actually really looking forward to the the, the junior 21.5 guys. Mm, yeah. um, we we're starting to we're, we're adding the 21.5 junior or novice to our club days in the lead yeah. up to the classic. So those guys get some those kids. Yeah. Um, get a little bit of track time in the lead up. Yeah. Um, we had seven seven kids in that class last year. Which That's really, really cool. Mm. Is there a different rule set for your juniors? Um, or is it just just the juniors? It's it's. No, it's just the juniors. Okay. Yeah. So same no, no. And the, only reason, the only reason uh, I ask that is because I know when I've seen it at the net, like the on road nationals and the New South Wales state titles, they use a control motor and control gearing. No. But we don't implement that down here. No. no. The, the only thing we read, we, we steer the junior classes away from tire treatments. Yeah. So, 
yeah, keep it yeah, simple. Keep it simple. Yep. Keep it simple and yep. as safe as possible, I suppose, at the end mm, of the that's day. That's right. That's what it's all about. Mm. So hopefully the Bendigo Classic, hopefully we get some some interstate is coming down. Mm. Um, yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah. so I spoke mm. to Mark Norman today. He's excited to come down. Um, we'll see. I know the Team Yokomo, um, they've got a few commitments on. That's going to be a busy time of year. Yes. But, yeah, we'll see if we can wrangle them in to come, come on down mm. and join the event. Um, yeah. And more importantly, BJ will be there. Well, that's probably the most important. There you go. Think, really. And you could be making a long-awaited return to 21.5. A comeback. Could be. Can, can we call it a comeback? You could call it a comeback, except I've never ever raced 21.5. <laughs> <It's> not really. <laughs> no. So when I used to race, it used to be modified, which is probably about the equivalent speed of it would be slower than 13 and a half now. Probably a little bit modified. Real, realistically yeah, a little bit slower, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I think 21.5 would be a good starting point for me to come back in. And we'll see. It might be really, really exciting. Yeah, it might be something, and we're know, hopefully going to do it with the all off. new Yokomo platform. That's right. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the news, but yeah, the all new Yokomo platform. We're hoping to put that in track. That's right, and um, move forward with that as an entry level twenty one five class car. Mm. That's it. Well, there Good. you go. I don't really have a lot other to add myself. No, you know, I'm just... really excited for. It. I know Hearns is chomping at the bit for mm. it. We've got to get some tires organized for you mm -hmm. guys. Yep. Um, you know, it's a non-sanctioned event, but it's a club's marquee event, and last year it was phenomenal. The weather was a little bit dicey in the lead-up, but it made it all the more exciting. It, it, it yep. made preparations interesting. <laughs> um, but the club pulled it together, yep. and you've got some really dedicated committee members that getting up at 4 a.m. poses no problems. That's it's ringing down. Staying ring up past 8. <laughs> <laughs> 4 a.m. is easy. 4 a.m. is easy for the for the cheese men, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. That's hey? right. It's just, yeah, they roll. Nah, that is fantastic. So it's really good to get behind such a great regional club. Um, Hearns is really proud to be part of it, and we hope that together we can make it a really great event for all RC racing, not only in Victoria but for the interstates that come too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I reckon should we play this video? Yeah, this a little video a from last year. Yep, this is a little video from last. <laughs> I wouldn't trust him. No. Well, I can't get any ready on the grid. Who's that? Is that Daff? That's Daffy. There you go, the driver's stand. The track surface was really good. It was really prepared well last year. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> you can't stay away from him. <laughs> right, here's another walk. And that wasn't even a class, that was just a club day that we visited Beach. Oh, was this a club day? Yeah. yeah. Club day. Oh. Here's Maddie. Here we go. Onto the back straight. All around reports. What do you got there, Brett? Me creeping around. Okay. <laughs> oh. 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 Bone Crusher. Well, bone Crusher didn't have a name back then. Bringing a bit of ill disrepute to the club. <laughs> bit of gangster tunes. That's his finest work, Brett. Is it? Bone Crusher came out for the Easter is, you know, fair as well. I think we're going to have to get the pit table again. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get yeah. Timmy excited. Yeah. No, what a bit, uh, like him, wasn't it? <laughs> that was really good. 
Crack is awesome. Think so. The prep. What's going on, Brett? There we go. And it was a great day. It was a really good day that day. And awesome it's, fun. it's like that. And that was just a normal club day that we went to. Mm. I think it was in the lead up to the classic. Mm. Yep. Um, so the tracks changed a little bit like them. Like I said, the infield's painted now. Um, I know that you guys have been working, I won't say tirelessly, but you've been definitely patching and repairing the, the surface yeah, as it goes. Yeah. Yep. To keep it as, as good as it as it is. Yep. And it definitely is somewhere worth attending. So if you can make it, please come down, get behind Hearns, get behind the club, and we'll have a good race. We will. Be a great day again. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today, Lachlan. Uh, thanks it's for being involved. Thank you, my man. Thank you. We'll Thank see you very much. Another day. Yeah, we for certainly sure. will. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Um, see you later. Thank you, Lachlan. That was good. Mm. Safe travels, my man. I don't know if he's here yet. So we're here we go. What have we got? Any guesses we, on we the do, car? We Who's do here? Indeed. We do indeed. We do indeed. We, we do have extras coming on board. Everybody. Hang on, hang on. I see Syrian's name popping his. Pop well, the, cookie, the cookie's in. Yep. What's Cookie up to? He said, type BT and type BJ. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello indeed, Cookie Monster. All right. Hang on, hang on. What? Someone said a Ferrari. I will confirm. Hang on. I can I can say that it's a Ferrari. Anthony said a Jag. It's not a Jag. It's definitely not a Jag. It is. Someone a... has said a Ferrari. Look, Anthony has said a Ferrari 250. Could be. Could be. All right. Yes, it is a Ferrari 250. Now Felicity says mm -hmm. Willow suggests it's a Ferrari of some kind. Willow is on the money. On the money. It is a def Ferrari. They're definitely close. Okay, and the car the color Felicity suggests is red. Although I think there's a special color for this, the name. Dark blue. It is not dark blue. It's a reddish although blue. Although it may, reddish <laughs> blue will be purple. <laughs> it's a reddish blue. Right. Okay. It's definitely red. Oh, look at this. Look at this. What, what, Surian, what? Surian is on. What's Surian, Surian saying? Surian has said, where is he? He says he loves a Ferrari 250. That is a Ferrari 250. And then Craig Jones says, GDO. Not a GTO. It is not a GTO. Not a GTO. Now, I saw Serene come on again. How about this? But I'm assuming it's a 250 TDF. And what assumption does he make that? That's what I want to know. What, what, do, you, what do you think of that assumption? I don't know. I, I just want to know what's behind it. What's behind the car is you. Yeah, I know that. It is, in fact, a two, 250 TDF. It is but, a 250 TDF. But, but what was behind... Syrian's thinking. Oh, what, what? Where did the assumption come from? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What's what's behind know, the assumption? There's a lot of things that sort of float around Syrian's head, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else we got? We've got a weight guess, which we're not going to go through because we've got no scale. So sorry, Thunder Turbine, we're not going to be weighing it today. That's right. Oh, Tony P's on. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tony P. Well, there's so many comments to go through. Is it? Yep. We've got Maddie J on there too. Yeah, he said hello. Yeah, maybe Jay, unfortunately, he won't be at the Classic this I, year. I, I don't know about this one. What? Tony P says a Jensen Interceptor. I think Tony P knows full well that it's not a Jensen Well, he came on late, right? So he didn't see, you know, the, the, the Fez comment. He's queuing up for his new um, K car. Yeah. Hey? Yeah. Could yeah. You, I, reckon oh. to, I reckon Tony P and TFG in their new K vans. I saw him reckons you need glasses. It's probably because of the, um, the reddish blue comment. Is it? Well, it's more red than blue. Yeah. <laughs> it's safe to say that it's... Oh, what have we got here? What? Con, con says a Tour de France. Tour de France. Is that TDF? Well, I don't know. Sort of works out to be, doesn't it? I'm really Do happy. Are giving points? I'm really happy We're at that points because that, that sounds awesome. That does sound really cool, doesn't it? Yeah. Is that what TDF stands for? That's what I'm asking. What was behind the TDF? Tour de France. Is that the French Riviera car? I could see you cruising oh. the French Riviera in that. Could you? Mm -hmm. I could too. I don't think I'll fit though. What do you mean? Because I'm really small. What are you trying to say? I can't. Well, well it's, I'm it's eight inch car. It's eight inch car, mate. It's oh, you're talking about a full size one. Full size. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about a full size oh, one. I'm sorry. not saying that particular one. Sorry, I didn't, didn't know you were hitting that. Didn't way. gel. No. All right. All right. Let's move on. We got what lots of other stuff to talk about. We have. What have we got? What are you going to look at? 
Shall we look at what I've got? Let's have a look at what you've got. I've got Otherwise, some new stuff. I love it when you've got new stuff. Let's look at this new stuff first because I think this is pretty intriguing. If you're intrigued, I'm intrigued. Uh oh. I've got a bucket of stuff. BJ's bucket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Look, Brett, I've got, I've got and BJ's bottles. bucket. I got bottles of paint, which are pretty special, and I think we'll probably have to do it on the top camera to get a. I'm glad I haven't seen the top camera at all today. Top camera. Top How's camera. That? All right, so we've got a whole lot of new products from Mr. Hobby or GSI Krios, and they're quite famous for a lot of their accessory type paints. You know, um, primers. What is a premium top coat? Top coat. Top coat? Yeah. So it's a clear. You see that? Then what, you brush it on? You... These are best um, sprayed on, so airbrushed. Airbrushed? Yeah. So they're, they're most famous. This, so this is acrylic. Aqueous. So they're more famous for all of their um, uh, lacquer-based paints. Mm. Now, lacquer-based paints are, are very useful, particularly in car uh, modeling, because they dry very hard and they're very easy to polish to get them up to a mirror finish. Which ones? The lacquers. Are they? Yeah. So, you know, when I do all my polishing videos, it's generally on lacquers. Now, this particular one. You do love the good polish. I do. Polish everything. So, this is their premium in their water based range. Mm. And what they've been doing is they've been using a lot of the technology they learned from their lacquers and they've been incorporating it into their acrylics. So, this has got very fine pigments and it's called Smooth Clear. So, it's premium because the smoothing action of this particular pigment. It allows it to settle really smooth, and when it hardens up, it gives you the, the best gloss possible. This has also got a UV cut um, inhibitor in it, which means that if it is out in the sun a lot, or you paint a lot of um, a very light colored models, say white, a lot of other clears tend to yellow over time. Really? And this will not because it's got the UV cut inhibitors in it. So they're, they're, they're most famous. Man, get the phone! They're most famous um, was their happen. lacquers. But now you can get the equivalent in an acrylic, which is really exciting. Really good. Really happy that they've done this. And this is their matte version. Matte. So the smoothing technology, you, you think, what can they do to a clear to make it any more special? Generally, mattes, when you spray them over a surface, it um, makes what? them sort of pasty, as in it uh, loses definition in the color. Because diffusing the color so much and it's mm. also got like a, a powder white sort of finish with this um pigment it sits and it maintains the integrity of the color keeps its density did you know a lot about this i Do can't I? wait yeah I, I expect to see a full in-depth tutorial so for example if you had a red and you sprayed a really cheap flat clear over it it'll start looking pink you it'll look red. faded i've got a red ferrari here that you can give well, us a sample. For, for... <laughs> no i'm not, not going to do that one but for instance, because it's a flat, you spray this over the red, it'll still look like a really deep red, but it won't have that sheen to it. Oh. It'll have a flat. Okay, so that's just one color that's new. What the else other have range, for it? So a new addition to their lacquer um, metallics. We've got this. This is graphite black, which is like, it's like a lighter version of metallic black. And these are quite popular in the, um, the Gundam modeling. Or well, this would be really good in um, uh, motorbikes and... Uh, car modeling as well and then metallics are the finest you can get and when i say fine it's not just like high quality so like it means that like really scale, smooth scale pigment you would say well that's right you see you see the flex you're not strong at all you sc the scale flex which as you which, said which i really you, you can't stand about. you can't, can't stand, stand it. full size flick right no like i know someone who's painted an aston martin in full size flick. and it's got full size flick and no. it looks it looks a bit big right but you can see there super smooth Okay, so that's that's a new metallic. Apart from that, I brought through there's a whole bunch of these new colours, which are the new Gundam colours. What makes what makes a Gundam colour a Gundam colour? What makes a Gundam colour a Gundam colour? Well, it's from this particular series. So this is the latest Witch Witch from Mercury series. And these are the specific colours. Like this is the blue for the aerial. And we all know the aerial is sold. That's no. the most popular thing for ages, isn't it, in Gundam? Everybody just wants an aerial. That's right. No? That's right. And they're water-based. So... You can't you want... drink it, though. Well, they're non-toxic. So you can drink them. It won't kill you. It'll probably make you sick. 
Was, was that uh, it's powder. something we wanted to know? No. No. Okay. But this this sort of stuff, because a lot of Gundam modelers, they're, they're sort of new to painting. And aqueous or water base is great. Well, Start because it's easy to spray if you want to use an airbrush. Or if you want to brush paint it, you can do that too. Well, the beautiful thing about Gundam is you don't have to paint them. Well, that's it. That's it. No? But if you choose to, these are the perfect colors for getting the exact tone for this particular series from the anime that's right there's also gundam seed as well gundam what gundam seed that's a different series so there's all the colors from there and there's also the traditional colors from the original series so that one i've picked what else have we got? oh this Ooh. this was intriguing so this is mr uv clear putty clear putty that's it so i bang on a lot about the um green stuff world uv um, clear resin. Oh, you don't you, stop. No, you don't. Stop. I use that for everything, and I'm going to talk about that a bit later too. You've even put it in your fillings. I have. Works really well. So, this is a thicker version of that. What do you mean? So you you know the um the green stuff one it actually flows. It's like it's like, it's like, a, it's like a thick it's like, it's like epoxy. It's like yeah. a thick molasses looking stuff. Yeah. This is actually a solid putty, so you can mold in your fingers. Oh. And then you press it. Press it. And then you can set it with either a UV lamp or you, you leave it outside. How handy is that? Yep. And then it'll set with sunlight, but it'll be slower with sunlight. That's why it's in a black container, so the light in here is not going to set it off. So it comes with a little tube like that. How impressive is that? This, Pretty is, good. this is a game changer. So if you want to We've make, not had anything like this. No. So if you want to make little lenses, like I've made lenses with the UV curing um, resin before, but you've got to be really careful because you can't have it on site, it'll spill out. Something but like this. imagine repairs on a model that you've broken or well, that's anything, it. how easy yeah, it is. Yeah, any clear bit. Absolutely. So there we go. Well, it doesn't even have to be clear. You can paint it. Well, you can paint it too. Absolutely. You could. So brand new spanking. Just arrived. I'm looking forward to seeing what you, you like can that? make. What can you make me? And now in Green Stuff World, like it came in a little while ago, but what? some stuff. This is one of my favorites. Why? This is the Chrome Airbrush. This is one I used on oh, that polycarbonate you, this body. This is another thing you bang on about. Because it's really easy to use. So you just shake it up, put it straight in the airbrush, spray it. Doesn't even have to be over any particular color, although black does seem to work very well with it. And then you do it, you gotta make sure you do it in very low pressure. It can't be like 15 psi or 20 psi. And then you clear it? No, just leave it. So 10 psi or lower tends to work best for it. Because what I found is high pressure dries it too quickly and doesn't have time to settle and you don't, I don't your... paint anything under 35 you know that i know you just spray it on like a chimp hose it on like a chimp that's right what do we got here i don't know i use a new metallic color and then metallics are really nice too because in acrylics it's been actually a lot of years before we've had some nice metallics come through and just see how smooth the fleck is on that one too i wish i knew actually how to properly paint and i would utilize these on you? RC bodies. Why now not? this is going to be exciting for the car modelers. Car modelers. Black chrome. Yes. Okay, so this is airbrush ready as well. Why do you need black chrome? Black chrome is quite often used for trims around windows on cars. Why not just normal chrome? Because they're not chrome. They're not silver. They're actually black colored. And they call it black chrome because it's still got a reflective surface, but it's very dark. Okay. Have you seen black chrome on cars? Okay. It's quite common. Is it? Yeah. On more modern cars. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's because I don't drive anything after 1972. You know that. 1972, what? After I was born. I don't drive anything after 1972. Don't you? Nope. Magical year, right? Eh? So there you go. So that's what I've got in brand new paint stuff. So from Mr. Hobby GSI and also from Green Stuff World. Different parts of the world Japanese and Spanish. Which one's your favorite? Oh, I've got different. I use them all. I like the putty. <laughs> You're talking about it, the individual thing. Yeah, what's your favorite? What did you Out favorite that, product this week? I like the clear. The clear is pretty impressive. This one? Even though it doesn't look very special, it's just clear paint. When are you going to use it? I don't know. When should I use it? Should I'm I use it right now? Give you a project to use it on. <laughs> you and your no, projects. Give you a project. You should do a Mac. Should I? Yeah. Okay. Consider that. After the Mephisto fillet is finished. Oh, I don't know. Don't know if that's <laughs> going to happen. We'll see. The fear's still uh, in progress. I forgot to bring the wheels actually. I meant to bring in the no, wire wheels to show. It's over. I'm <laughs> going to enter it next year. I'll finish <laughs> yeah. it. You're going to put your name on it. <laughs> right. All right, let's go back to all these um, cars. 
What have we got? Comments. What have we got? Everybody's jumping in. Everybody's chiming in. Let me try and catch up with where I was. Should I get young Finley in? Is he going to talk dreams? I don't know. Is he? We can. Well, I think we're going to get into trouble when it comes to weights. Uh, what have we got here? What have we got? We've got lots of people. John P. John P was half the reason that it was a bit disorganized. Apparently today. I said a naughty word. Did you I say did? a naughty word? Probably. I don't say naughty words. Associated. What? I'm not really? sure. I see 10. <laughs> did I say that? I said it now. <laughs> did I? I didn't think so. I mean, I don't say naughty words unless I'm out in public. All right, where are we now? Where are we now? <laughs> oh, the question, can you use a chrome on a polycarbonate body? Well, I have. And I've got an example. I might run out there and show. You have and you did. Yes. <clears throat> and it actually looks pretty good. Yeah. It hasn't been put through the rigors of racing, but it, it's not like flaking off, is it? We tried to give it a crumple test. Yeah, yeah. That's, I smacked it over the counter. I'm going, that's going nowhere. Oh, that's right. That's good enough. <laughs> that's the test. That's like How much it, more force could there be? It's like when you tie something down with an oxy and you flick it. Oh, that's going nowhere. <laughs> If you don't say that, it's going to come off for sure. That's right. It's all about the process. We good? No I think we're guesses? good. So we know that it's a Ferrari. Yeah, we know it's, it's a, a 250. TDF. Yep. I want to find out what TDF stands for. Yep. Is it indeed Tour de France? It sounds good. It sounds we good. Know, we want to know the color. Actually, there was color. Guess there was the a color. Yeah, because I saw the Italian. Uh, red. And we know Rosso Corsa. Rosso Corsa. I reckon it's Rosso Corsa. Hmm. All right. Racing red. All right. So, I, I think it is. I don't know. I have not seen the box. Did you see the box? Um, oh, we've, we've got another TDF. And a year. Tierra del Fuego. That sounds more like it. That sounds more Italian. I like Tour de France better. Do you? I don't know that the Italians would put that on their card. Don't... That's a neighboring country. Why not? Oh, what are you trying to say? Oh. <clears throat> They're probably not the best mates. Yeah, okay, mates, I reckon. They're probably okay, mates, but they, they, they're, <laughs> they're better than each other. No? Uh, Ferrari Enzo's not going to go putting French on his car, is he? Uh, what was that? I don't know. What does that mean? <laughs> I, I hope it's not bad. There's another bad word that's coming out of my hand. All right. What are we going to talk about now? You've got something? You've got I've something, got, haven't you? I've got something. You've got, got a package. I've got a bag. We haven't seen a package for a while. We didn't, we didn't do a Brett's bag last week, did we? No. no we didn't. No. We should have. Um, but we probably got distracted and we didn't. What's right. in my bag this week? What is in Brett's bag? Well, let's give the story a little context. Last week, I went eight scale off road racing. You did, and you're at the EMCC. The EMCC went out to see the boys there, mm -hmm. and it was fantastic. I haven't been there since the EMCC Cup, what February or March this year, which is a big, their big marquee event. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, turning up with no practice and throwing a borrowed car down. But yeah, I went out with a club race. Mm -hmm. May or may not be doing secret squirrel development. Yep, I can vouch that he may or may not be. And an exciting, great product. Um, but I was also putting some tyres through the test and some batteries. And it was really mm. good to get down to the club. We had a huge turnout. We had mm. a beautiful Melbourne winter's day, mm. if you believe there is such a thing. Mm. Um, and yeah, I had, about, I had about two hours track time. Mm -hmm. And I walked away with some very valuable information. And is that valuable information inside the bag? Yes. Is it? Yes. All right. Shall well, I crank it from the top? Yeah, why not? What have we got? What have we got? Have I told you how much I love this Rubik's Well bag? Oh. What have I got? I think you have said it a number of times, how much you love that bag. I've got some tyres. All right. So now, the only reason I brought these in is because I know you love to, to rush and cut. Yeah. Oh, these ones rustle pretty good. Yeah, change your name to Russell. <laughs> what do you reckon? Uh, Russell with a T in the middle. The B silent. <laughs> Sorry, guys, about the audio. Don't those tyres come in a fantastic bag? Right, what we are looking at here yeah. are the tyres that I ran for in excess of... Oh, How's that? In excess of probably an so that's a full set you use yeah i use these for at least an hour and 20. Right. anybody who saw me there that day knows that from the minute i got there in the morning to the minute i left there was the car the buggy was on track cutting laps well they all still look really sharp like all the edges still look sharp yeah 
Now, obviously, they are showing. That's why I bought these ones in. They are showing signs. Oh, compared to a fresh one? Yeah. They okay. are showing signs of wear compared to a fresh one. Let's, let's go really tight. Let's go in tight. Let's have a look how they've worn after an hour and 20 on track. So you can see here the one on the, the left. So is, you see how fresh it is. Yeah. Super square profile. Super on the top. square. And it is what a very small block tire. Yeah. I'd call it. Um, and it absolutely suited the conditions really well. Yeah. Um, it's really it was really quite abrasive um, track at the moment. So an hour and a half. Long track, an hour and a half. Wow. And have a look at that. And they're probably half worn. Yeah. They pulled up really really well. I would do another club day on these tires. Yeah. Um, and not only that, the traction and the drive out of corners and mid corners was phenomenal. Wow. Anybody who knows again knows that I was only running a three S um power system not for not a 4s um turbo powered buggy yeah or, you know boost assisted buggy mm -hmm. it was effectively a blinky 3s buggy and it was phenomenal yeah so, that's yeah, impressive isn't it that is really impressive the tire wear um and that's a sweep defender in the yellow compound so that is their super soft i would call it okay yeah so they got gold which is one softer so they're ultra soft and um, this would be their super soft and i did run a couple of other tires as well okay for comparison now these other tires probably did about half an hour each and again i don't have new tires to compare them to but we can see here oh look at the how, wear pattern how how low they've gone look at how low they've gone and feeling of the rubber it's actually a, like a, a firmer compound there's right. no doubt about it that it's firmer in the carcass and it's a that's a stiffer rubber. It's a higher shore rubber. So that is really, really cool to see. So at EMCC, that's yep. the difference between two different brands of tyre. Yeah, and two different compounds. compounds. So this one here's done about an hour and a half, the, the sweep. This one here's done about half an hour. I would have thought the harder one would not wear so yeah, much. Yeah, but it's because it's scraping more. Right, okay. It's actually causing it to wear instead of grip. Oh, okay. So by providing grip, you can, in fact, be reducing your tire wear. And that is in an AKA super soft. So that's right. not a long wear. That is a super soft, yep. which to feel and uh, by all accounts is a firmer tire. Right. And then this one next to it, this is the same compound in a different tread. Right. Um, and this is the catapult. Right. Well, that looks like it's worn even flatter. Yeah. So that has worn quite flat as well. Um, probably not quite as much wear as the impact, right? Um, although the impact did provide me with better feel, but a little bit better oh, okay. traction for one reason or another. These, it. Yeah, they just couldn't, it just couldn't generate quite as much grip with the catapult. Okay. And these are AKA super soft. Right. So I wanted to do some comparison to the sweep tires right. and I'm super happy. I thought these were going to be too soft. That's why I took other tires. Yeah. Um, but didn't want to burn up all new sets of tires. Yes. Um, and really, really good. Now, another thing, these sweeps, these come as a pre-mount. Yeah. So these are pre-mounted, pre-drilled, pre, uh, pre what, pre-punched. Yeah. Did you glue these up again? No. These have not been touched. And I checked them after every battery. Oh, so they haven't been coming loose? No. Because, they, I mean, they have you know, not come cars loose. have a lot of power that goes through these things. Yeah. And they, they go through a lot of hell, too, like as far as... Especially when I'm behind the wheel, like crashing and cartwheeling and, and sideways action and drifting. That's right. Hitting boards, running over boards and hitting trees. Running over. That's right. <laughs> Smashing into marshals. That's right. I did actually. Funny, <laughs> did I tell you about that? <laughs> no. A certain. Did they survive? He survived. He wasn't. <laughs> he was marshalling another car and he was on track. Yep. May or may not have been on the mark. And this marshal should have known better. Right. His, <laughs> his initials are SH. Right. Uh, his surname's Healy. Right. Uh, he was, it was pretty funny. I was laughing. He was not laughing. I'm, I'm about to laugh now. <laughs> no, poor bugger. No, it's not nice. No, we, and well, no, that, one, no one likes getting hit by a real no, car. Stuff. And no one likes to hit people. But right. when you're just going on the line and there's somebody standing in the track, it, yeah. it's unfortunately can happen. Yes. Um, and electric buggies are a little bit quieter, obviously, mm. than the nitro ones, so I can yeah. sneak up on him. <laughs> <laughs> Got him right in his shin. <laughs> but anyway, I hope he's still limp and he deserves it. <laughs> no. But yeah, so really, really happy with this sweet with this sweet sweet rubber. There you go. Super happy. So it's really good how they come in a full set. 
They come in I a full set. It. They come pre-glued, pre. I did no prep to these whatsoever. Hmm. Um, I did put a, like a texture mark on the inside so I know which corner of the car it came off because I was rotating them because the, the tire wear was quite heavy on the front left. Right. Okay. Just the way the layout is. Mm -hmm. um, and for ultimate speed, you probably wouldn't rotate them much, but I was really looking for a bit of longevity out of the tires and to test how they were going to wear over the day. Mm -hmm. And I, I cannot believe it. That a soft, such a soft compound tire yeah. wore so well. And it honestly, it would have had an hour and a half track time. Right. Really, really good. There we go. And that is a sweet defender. So yeah, very we've, got, impressive. we've got about four or five different treads mm. and three different compounds. We've got gold, yes, which is ultra, yep. yellow, super soft, yep. and silver, which is just soft. Right. So that was with the yellow compound. It was beautiful. Very cool. Really, really good. Very impressive. That's right. Sweet one eight five. Get them on your buggy. What there's else more is stuff it? in there? Yeah. Oh, there's more stuff. What's that? Nine steps. How much do we love nine steps? Nine steps is our favorite. Um, Lots of power. And the reason I want to talk about these is I can't believe how predominant they were in the pits. Mm. It wasn't just me, you know. Um, so these two batteries here, yeah, these powered some of the fastest buggies. Um, so these are the batteries that were being used in the other competition buggies. Yes. Okay. Yes. So here I've got a nine thousand four S hundred C. Yeah. This is HB rated, 15.2, yep. and, and an 8,000. Right. Um, Weight-wise, there's about 40 grams in it, I think, when I did weigh them up. Okay, so 40 grams so, extra in the 9,000. Yeah, so the 9,000 is definitely heavier. Mm -hmm. For eight-scale buggy, it's probably a little bit of an overkill, but mm. overkill means that the battery is not working quite as hard. Mm. Yeah, so it's probably going to be more reliable in the long run. Okay. The 8,000 is more than enough. But if you're running Truggy, you almost need one of these two. A, a Truggy, an electric Truggy running a 10-minute final will take probably 6,000 milliamps. Well, they worked the battery hard, wouldn't they? You know. Um, so I heard of figures coming back from the, the 4S buggies that they were using like 3,800 or something, 4,000 milliamps. Mm -hmm. So you never sort of want to go over more than sort of half the capacity of the battery if you can help it. So, yeah, really, really good packs. Really good to see. Really robust. And Simon Healy's on. Is he? Mm. How's your legs, Simo? The abuse will come, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, I was running around in this sucker. This is what I was using, a 6500 3S. Mm. And when I was doing practice runs, I was getting about 17 minutes out mm. of this um, – uncensored buggy mm -hmm. and it was nice it's nice and light i haven't actually put if i had our scales here i could tell you exactly how much you can it see weighs. the height difference if you spun those on their side yeah there you go see you can see the height difference same length yeah um and although it's 6500 capacity i was only taking about 2800 out is of that it. all yeah that was all that was all um so it was pretty it was pretty power efficient that said i did only oh, have Quite a small pinion. I was surprised at how well you did with the 3S. Yeah. Amongst all the 4S powered cars. Yeah. Because at that meet, where'd you finish up? Uh, fourth overall. And that's not a testament to my talent, no, not at all. But um, it was the, the buggy is good. The buggy is so good. The, the good, tires were good. power made it more drivable. Yep. I crashed it less. Wasn't overpowered. No, I crashed less. Yep. Um, I didn't DNF or break anything all day. Mm -hmm. um, that probably contributed to really good tire wear as well. There was guys when they were really struggling with tire wear. Yes. Um, so the tire wear was really, really nice. On so those you lack top speed, obviously. Yeah, there's no doubt. I was definitely down on top speed. But everywhere else, it was fine. You're yeah, well, it's really off road. So the, the, the straight's like the smallest you part of the track. You weren't overshooting corners. No, no. Yeah. Well, only just normal misdriving. Right. You know, just, just classic, classic Brett. <laughs> well, that's a real testament on power as well, right? So yeah. sometimes having the the power allowed isn't necessarily going to be the winning factor no no go back to yeah. the front one ah. no definitely not it's definitely not so really really happy and you know what the buggy was easy to well easier to drive mm. um i definitely didn't have quite as much wear and tear on the drivetrain you know because you're not got stupid amounts of power um tire wear was really good mm. and when i did hit things i was probably hitting them with a lighter battery, a lighter car, you know, because it was probably what 
150 grams lighter in in battery yeah which is a big big difference yeah big difference as a percentage car. in the in the car hmm. so and the suspension worked really well hmm. but yes yeah, so i was really happy with the sweep and the nine steps i was really happy to see other people using them and really happy yeah, that's good stuff. really happy with the performance like we've always known they've been really good batteries but to see that other people have the confidence in them and see the results now that's a plus that's a real big plus hmm. so get to it yeah electric eight scale it's it's really quite a fun class mm. and emcc club yeah i really appreciate it and thank you for having me they had an agm while they were there they took on a new committee mm -hmm. um, i'm not super familiar with all the guys yet but mm -hmm. i will get to know them over the next year and i'm looking forward to spending more time down there so Good yeah stuff. look yeah, out for nice. that that's what nice. i got in my bag let us see where we're off to because i think we've got a few people talking about the car What are they talking about? Well, well, that was the, the the chrome they were talking about. Simon's probably still whinging about how I ran in, I run him down. I think someone's confirmed that Tour de France is correct. Is it TDF? John P. Johnny P would know. He's a bit of a car guy. You are correct. It is Tour de France. Tour de France. There you go. There you go. I didn't know that. There you go. All right. Oh, here we go. Johnny P. How does the switch compare to the AKA in grip? Well, they so were definitely they, they definitely had more bite mm -hmm. um, because it was a softer softer tire. So it wasn't like for like because the sweep was definitely a softer compound. The sweep yellow is softer than the AKA super soft. Um, the insert on the sweep was probably a little bit softer as well. But like I said, having the three S slightly underpowered to the 4s buggies um yeah it sort of it gave less um deformation and ballooning of the tire mm. so the contact patch was kept really consistent um and it's evident by the tire wear because mm. if that had been on 4s with heaps of turbo it probably would have spun up and started spinning off the center block well, sometimes we got all that power on hand you just can't help it can you sometimes you get on no. straight and you squeeze it right no. and that's where you and it's not that, that buggy that buggy like it wasn't noticeably slower mm. anywhere other than down you should have seen the thing launch out of the corners because i had those the sweeps on yeah and it would just jump out of the corners because it was, had the traction yeah i was only like the after the first 10 meters or 15 meters after the corners that yep. the other cars could close up any gap i was gone i would wow. jump out of the corners there you go um, retro rob you know before you're talking about hitting marshalls yes so he's been limping for four years after an RC car hit the back of his heel. Oh, right in the Achilles, huh? Oh, that sounds pretty painful, doesn't it? Sorry to hear it. Trey, was it a frog? Yeah. It, I hope it, it was had to be, a. Had to be some sort of retro. Hope car. it was a cool car. I no? remember back in the day going up to Sydney to race a scale buggy, and um, what was that track again? They used to have this really nice track, and they had a um, a crossover. Crossover. The, the That'd most, be fun the, to marshal. The most most dangerous part for the marshal was there, right? And a couple of times I've seen marshals get hit in the head. A couple with, of with times. A, with an A scale car jumping over the, um, it was a grating so you could see through it. Yeah. They just launch it and smack in the head. So eight scale buggies are about three and a half kilos. Yeah, you feel yeah. it when it hits you in the head. Three and a half kilos. Yeah, and when, when it's launched. They're it traveling at speeds of probably up to 75 kilometers realistically yeah. on, on yeah. the straight. And it doesn't sound like 75 Ks, but it's. That's like a cannonball. Oh, I'm trying no? to tell you, Liverpool. Yeah, that's the one. Liverpool. That's yeah. the one. Liverpool. The Liverpool track. That was awesome. Went up there a few times. Yeah. No, that's really cool. So, yeah, I'm really happy with the sweeps. I'm looking forward to getting them on the track more. Yes. yes. And like I said, the buggy. But mm. more details of that buggy to come. Mm. For sure. What else have we got? i got some other stuff. You want to yeah. talk about some other stuff? Tell us what's in BJ's bing bag. All right, let's, let's, go, go. let's go this way. I thought I'd bring this because it's quite interesting. What? Well, it's experimental I'm not aircraft. I'm not interested. It's a D558. Oh, because the D557 was a turd. Well, apparently. <laughs> so this looks like the X1 because it's based on the same experimental series of trying to get a, a plane to do faster than the speed of sound. So X1 did the speed of sound, and that was in like 1945, I think, after the war. Now They needed this, Maverick. Well, Maverick came later. If he was there in that time, he would have done like Mark V, right? <laughs> it would have been just hanging onto the wings. <laughs> he would have 
My mate Maverick, he would have he would have done it. He would have got it there. He would have done it inverted. What, so, does that, what does that mean? You haven't ever seen it, have you? What's inverted mean, though? It's upside down. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> you got, that's, how you got, that's how you got belts for. Uh, well, this is from the, the same sort of um, experimental um, program. And in 1952, they actually got this on rocket power. Rocket power. And launched off an aircraft. Estes. <laughs> it was a big Estes rocket, right? This did Mark II. So two times the speed of sound. With a pilot. Yeah. The thing yeah. is the echo at twice the speed of sound. I don't know. Should we try it? We need to get into something that it does, like well, Mark II. We've well, got the Estes powered velodrome car. <laughs> well, we wouldn't try and, like fitting it. No, I don't know if we might slow it down a bit. But I'll bring that to your attention because we've got these on special. So we've got a whole heap of right. um, specialty kits. They're on sale at the moment. If we go mad. Well, it well, seems that way. So not just special hobby. There's a lot of um, <coughs> other brands like... Um, uh, AA, uh, KP, um, all you, different guys. You're just making it up. Not all of it, just no? all of it. But I'll show you what, what's in them. So they look like a simple kit. Okay, well, this particular plane looks fairly simple, I guess. But with these, they actually in include resin and photo etch parts as well. Resin and photo etch. Yeah, so you get your little manual there. So that's it. It's one sheet of sprues. Only that's all one. you're going to get. But you've got some really nice decals there. So these are the ones with the X markings. They're, that's a version that actually did Mark II. And we've got lithograph printed dials for the cockpit. Over here, we've got our little bag of resin. Let's see if I can get in there. So you can see that little bag of resin. And there are all the wheels. All those super fine details, see all those rivets and things. It's got a nice meaty sprue. It has. So these sort of things do have a meaty sprue, and there I'm showing you the photo etch. Maverick would not appreciate that. I still got 30% off these kits at the moment. Oh. What's the details here? I hope you take the trouble to um, put one in next year's Model Expo. At that, that price. Does Jack A know? <clears throat> Jack A? Does he I, know? I haven't told him. It's, <laughs> otherwise, he'll buy all our stock. There'll be none left. That's right. So that is from Special Hobby. So it's all different kits. I think there's like two or three hundred different kits you can choose from. Yeah. So have a look at that. There's a little collection. You go to the website and there'll be a link on the front page to see all these. So I've got that. I've got other stuff too. Have you got anything else? Have I? Yeah. I've got Estes Oh, Estes. What are you going to do with that? I don't know. What size that? I don't do know. know? I've, just, I've just turned around and seen some Estes and just got excited. Or the rocket power. Well, we, we meant to put away the most powerful ones, which are Fs. And we didn't. We didn't. They all we sold out. So, so the next thing we've got is Es. And we need twice as many of them. Oh. So we've got those back here because we don't want to miss out. No. These are going to end up on a vehicle of some kind. Yeah. Okay. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Yep. No second thoughts? Nope. No? Nope. Is two of them enough? Nope. You want to put multiples on a car? I think four. I think like exhaust pipes. Like this... The, the Ferrari's got you want to fire parts. them off at the same time, or you don't want to do them yeah, like, no, sequentially? I it, no, I want it to be like <laughs> just go boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just take them all together in a, in a in a stack of four. Yep, and they're all going to go kaboom at the yep. same time. They look like a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right, all right. So okay. we're going to have to get another packet of these. I think so. Right. Yeah, it has to be excessive. Well, this is pretty excessive. Well, I don't know that it is. It doesn't impress me. It's a big car. It's a big seven yeah, scale car. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah? So, it has to be excessive. All right. It has to be comical. Okay. How about we look at something else? What else is happening this weekend? Well, that's what I was I was hoping to get young Finley. Oh, were you? I was. Shall I put this back? You start talking about that, and then I'm going to try and grab the scales and Finley. Oh, grab the scales. Yeah? Yeah. I sent a message. Well, while it... you're doing that, right. I, I was going to talk about this particular train because this is a Japanese train. And it runs through Tokyo. And if anyone's been to Tokyo before, they've probably ridden on it. Now, I was going to find out to give you an idea of how big the circuit is. Have a look, I'm just doing a wiki at the moment. So, this is the Yamanote line. So, Yamanote is the one that does the circle all around Tokyo. And 
generally for tourists, you pretty much just hang around. Um, I'm back. Oh, I'm back. So I was just talking about this. This is like the city circle, the city loop. The mill. Of trains going around Tokyo. Melbourne Underground Rail. What? what? Oh. So this does a loop Where? around Tokyo. Oh, does it? Yeah. And then there's all these different lines that go through. So you can transfer. Like the Midnight Club. Oh, it's a train. It's not a ride. It's not a highway. What? What are you talking about? It's a train. It's a train line. Isn't there a freeway that goes around Tokyo? Is there? Not, sure. not that I know of. <laughs> but this goes around and around. And so I was looking up the wiki. The wiki? So the actual length of the circuit is... Oh, I had it here before. I lost it. Line length. It's 34 kilometers long. It's not very big, is it? No, it's pretty big for a circle. I reckon? Huh. It takes about 40 minutes to go all the way around. A bit longer if you walk. <laughs> <laughs> Walking next to the train. It'd be quite scenic. <laughs> so there you go. So Yamanotsu Sen, it's actually been around for a very, very long time. They started building it after World War II. The, the what? The Yamanote. Yamanote. Yep. You just said it so naturally. Oh, did I? Yamanote. Train. I used to catch this every day when I was there. Oh, really? Yeah, to go to work. Was it that colour? Yes, always green, so it's easy to recognise. Yeah. It goes from every one of the um, large little cities, I guess, within Tokyo. Just to give you an idea of how big Tokyo is, the population of Tokyo itself is the same population as the whole of Australia. Really? In Tokyo? In Tokyo itself. Okay, so that's Tokyo in the centre and a little bit out. It's a greater Tokyo. Greater? Yeah. Because and, it's not lesser? No, and then the, the each little area like this tokyo station and then actually shinjuku station is the biggest station and shinjuku in its size by itself would be the size of melbourne really yeah so when you go to any of these big stations on this circuit it feels like you're going from another melbourne to another melbourne to another melbourne just to give you an idea of how big tokyo really is absolutely massive place how many million 23 million <whistles> oh here he is here's the star of the show Hello, I didn't know I was being here. <laughs> right, there you go. Well, we couldn't have it without you because we're talking trains. <laughs> oh, you need to have the expert. And we're talking in scale. Yeah, we're um, talking in scale. And even we're going to And we're going to talk about Sunday. <laughs> oh, yes, of course, of course. Yeah? So what event have we got on Sunday? Why are we talking about this and Sunday? Well, it's the AMRA Model Railway Exhibition. Is it? Yeah. Australian really? Have we Mod finished about this one? Well, Have we covered of? it? Yeah, pretty or much. i cut you off. <laughs> well, we haven't talked about who makes it. So who makes this particular train set? Kato, one of the most uh, biggest brands in Japan when it comes to model go. train stuff. There you go. Are the Japanese big on model train stuff? Oh, they're huge on model train stuff. Yeah? Yeah, some of the best model trains you can get are from Japan. So it's amazing. Kato, Tomix. Tomix Classic, yep. Yep. Anything else? GGW. GGW. We know very much about them. Mm. And some others. I don't yeah. know. I'm a British. And, and, they, and, they, and they do... <laughs> Yeah, there are quite a few specialty small manufacturers of brass trains. Mm. And they would specialise in N scale? N scale is the most popular. Um, they they do they HO as well. Assuming that because of the space. Yes. So N scale. Have. So the, the really clever thing about Kato is it's designed so it can be quite easily assembled out of the box. Yes. In your miniature like apartment. Mm. And then after you finish pack working with it, that's right, you pack it away, it's a very modular. It's they sort of come with like little plugs. Similar to um, Bachman do something similar when the HO train's called AZ track. Yes. It's kind of similar to that if people are, have a Bachman's Thomas yes. at home and know about that. Yes. Yeah, the only difference is the Bachman one is absolutely terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And this is absolute premium. Yeah. yeah. Works and they have the, the, time. the points and they all plug and play, yeah? That's right. Yeah. So you That's can right. ju you just put the, don't have to bother with wiring or anything. Just put the plug motor point motor in and you're pretty much good to go That's and a right. long time ago I, I think i played with the controller with marlin even mm. and the kato controller is phenomenal mm. no it's got a yes. really nice feel and it's, yeah. it's, it's like got changing all, gears it's, well, got it's, awesome. all, it's, it's got shaped so it's like a real control thing so yeah, it's over here it's got a little bit of resist yeah because it's got a little bit of resistance in Where the controller it? it's over here yeah there right, it is sure. right there i'm not sure but it's like it's bloody beautiful there it is yeah. Oh, actually, let me change back to here. What are we changing? So I can see how I'm focusing. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, look at that. So you see how this rotates. So that's that's very much like controlling on control panel. And then 
the this little toggle here controls the direction and it's like proper clunks yes you know it's got it's a lot a of really, good, got a lot of resistance to it to make it actually feel really good to it feel. feels like you drive i've never driven a train but <laughs> i imagine it's like driving a train so to give you an idea in this particular set uh, give me an idea it, it comes with the four for what four carriages so one locomotive and three carriages but if you want to do a full train as it's actually run it's actually this is how long it is and it goes on this layer it would touch from one end to the other well it would wouldn't it so you make sure you get an extension <laughs> which they do right? sell yeah because the trains in japan quite often they'll be really long they'll have 13 to 14 cars connected to them what how long are the platforms really long it's like, <laughs> to accommodate it's them like, it's like walking to the next suburb yeah no? so that's why you know there's people that actually plan their way if you go to the train stations in japan they'll have a map of each different train station and they'll tell you where each exit is in conjunction with which car you're riding in oh, I know that so right. people work out which car is best for them so that when they get off it's right next to the exit or where they have to walk i do that and my wife thinks that i'm a bit you know a bit funky, a bit, a bit funky. oh really you just tell I'm, you I'm, just I'm, tell her you're japanese all right <laughs> <laughs> to me it's always the front carriage is the closest to get off at flinders street station well there you go I haven't worked out which one at the home station yet though right <laughs> i know it there to the go. t i know it to the door whether it's the old train or the new train yep i've got it sorted hey. so what other special things happen on sunday tell me the sunday amra model railway association AMRA, of course, standing for the Australian Model Railway Association. Mm -hmm. yeah. and that'll be their big exhibition for Victoria. Yes. They've got all sorts of amazing uh, layouts on exhibition. All the manufacturers are going to be there, so I'm going to be excited to meet them. Yep. They'll be running a charter train, which will be an actual restored red rattler that used to run on the metro system. And we're catching it. We're catching it. Hey. We're taking it from Flinders Street to the showgrounds. Hearns red fo rattler. Hearns foam is baby. <laughs> hey. How cool is that? I'm looking forward to it. I've never been on a red rattle before, if it wasn't obvious, but <laughs> so I'm excited to try it. Last time I was on a red rattle was like in the early 1980s. No, mm. I don't think I've ever been on one either. Yeah, so this is going to be, we'll see why they call them red rattlers. I'm only, <laughs> I'm only 23 years old. <laughs> when did red rattlers start? Uh, back say? 19, well, they were originally built in the 1800s as coaches just that pulled on the locomotives but then they were as uh, the tape coaches <laughs> but then they were converted into electric locomotives so they've been the coaches have been around since the 1800s and as motorized independent units 1910. wow i didn't know they were that old they're ancient wow and that's they used them until the 1980s that's, <laughs> that's back when they made things properly made things to last yeah. <laughs> 100 years wow how good is that had no idea how many k's do you reckon it's done 10 million <laughs> no, that's, my dad that's, re that's really cool so <laughs> tell me so what what are we expecting to see at the train show well we're seeing all exhibition a lot of exhibition layouts usually a lot will be done by amra themselves yep. mm -hmm. for, mostly from the victorian branch but they should have a couple other from the other states yeah mm -hmm. should have come down to show at the exhibition mm -hmm. uh other model railway clubs will also have a few of their layouts on display there mm -hmm. Uh, people who aren't a part of clubs will usually have independently make a layout and they'll just show it at the exhibition. Right. We're having shops. Yes. Will be, uh, and of course, like I said, the manufacturers will be there. So you'll get okay. to go get some previews of what they're working on. Yes. Really cool. Yeah. Well, we're going to visit on Sunday. We so we're visit? not going to have a shop there. No. But in celebration. It's too much like hard work. So we're <laughs> going to go. We're going to go. We're going to take roving camera. We're going to take That's the right. gimbal. Yeah. So over the weekend, it actually starts today. The sale. Midnight. After midnight. Midnight. We're going to have a train show celebration sale. Yeah, celebration sale. That's it. So make sure you you look um, on our website and check out all the trains after midnight. That'll run for the two days, yep. the duration of the show. Yeah. And make sure you check it out before it ends on Sunday. And come and see us Sunday at the show. That's right. We'll be there. We might see you on the train. We might see you in the show. And then we're going for chicken and beers. Chicken and beers. I'll probably be dressed the same as I am right now. So. <laughs> all right. Really? Well, I hope you get changed. <laughs> do you do the washing at home or do I have to ask Felicity? You might have to ask her. Right. Oh, there you go. Felicity is going to be another load on tonight. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. I'm looking there we forward go. to having a good event out. It's going to be a lovely day. Yep. And I've never been to a train show before, so I'm looking forward to um, Finn's coming with us and Dave from Hobbyman. Yes. 
and looking forward to these guys actually teaching teaching me some stuff mm -hmm. you know it's going to be really cool and mm -hmm. it's also good for me and dave because we can look at the layouts there and get some mix of inspiration for our own absolutely yeah, sure absolutely, absolutely. fantastic thing look forward to it thanks for coming on this week mate thank thanks you for really. having me all right take you care on. buddy thank you all right let's see we've got a lot of how much does the car weigh i reckon oh hang on you actually got a thing you want to do that now? Do you want people to guess? Well, I haven't they been guessing? No. They've missed out. Hold on, let's guess. <laughs> well, I thought somebody would guess. Should, anyway. we, should we start? Well, we've got two minutes. Two minutes? I was going to talk a bit longer. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. How let's much try and catch up with some of this. All right. We want a weight of the car now. Wait of the we car. still haven't got the year yet, right? So we want the year and the weight of the car. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just calibrating the scales. What have we got here? Here we go. That will that will do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Don't go quiet on me, beige. Oh, I'm checking some of these comments. So Teutonic Nobility has asked, do you think a company will ever make a 24 scale model tank kit? I don't know because Tamiya have released the 125 scale tank kits in the past and they've re-released them. The thing these days. Right? 125. 125th was a standard back then because it's like a quarter, I don't know, it's like quarters of an inch top thing. Mm um and then the stand become 124 scale so 25 24 scale is pretty similar in cars so that's the standard there but some people want like 24 scale or 25 scale tanks to match up with the car scale oh. but unfortunately it never really kicked on like it's, it's not 35th isn't it the 35th is the and most 16. popular and 16th is the big goer now yeah so if you want to be tank to the 16th scale, like eight scale eight scale you can get in the russian countries and they're radar controlled really and they're gas powered what and they're steel <laughs> Of really? course, you got to build them properly. <laughs> They're going to be made proper. Why don't we have that? I say we get one. Ah. Oh. Oh, so, so the we reasoning could send for it we could drive the tank across the street to get our coffees. Yeah. So Teutonic says 16 scale tanks are too big and 35 are too small. Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, I don't think they don't like the luck there. You might have to 3D print something. 3D print what? Yeah, uh, 25 scale tank. Oh, that takes all the fun out of it. Yeah. Well. So Retro Rob has said 1387. Nope. No, lower. Lower. It's lower. Lower, Rob. All right. All right. Okay. What have we got here? Got any sure. more guesses? Any more guesses? Well, you've got to talk about something. Don't worry about the guesses. What do you got? What do you got? Barkman can be very abysmal. Yes, that's true. Oh, but some of their HO and stuff is low It's beautiful, though. So they've I got, they've got two. So the easy track is actually from Barkman, USA. Oh. And Barkman USA is nowhere near the quality of Barkman Europe, oh, unfortunately. Okay, okay. All right. Because I was going to say, some of the Barkman locos and that I really enjoy, like the, the look of. Mm. Oh, look at that. serene has got Kato as well. That's it. has got a TGV. TGV? TGV. That's a European Shinkansen bullet train oh. thing. There you go. Yeah. All right. What have we got? I was going to say, isn't that an Alfa Romeo GTV? Yeah. Yeah. They don't make them anymore. Why do they stop making them? Because they... <laughs> because they what? Oh, here's what I want. I've got weights. Got weights. 850 grams. No, too low. 650, way too low. Way too low. 1100. That's too low. Close, but too John low. John P saying 1560, way too high. Way too high. Uh, Syrian's asking, where's Plugger? We haven't had Plugger around for ages. I think we lost Plugger. <laughs> I think Plugger went overseas. I think Plugger's overseas. I think yeah, Plugger's yeah, in the yeah, sandpit. Yeah, yeah. So, Serena, you're going to have to wait for Plugger to come back. I've got a different Plugger. Where's our other Plugger? Is there? Where? Oh, right there. Oh, he's Clint. He's Clint. I was going to say We've got this Plugger. This is not original Plugger. This is restaurant car Plugger. Go to overhead. Let's have a look. Boom. You're going to upside down. Restaurant Plugger. He comes off the plinth, babe. Did you know? Yeah. I love the pinstriping. Yeah. So this is designed to actually go on a Kato undercarriage. Is that right? That's correct. So this this version of the kit, we've got these kits in stock at the moment. This is the static kit with the base. Yeah. But if you wanted to, you just pop it off the base and it'll sit on top of a Kato um, chassis, like so. You just broke it. <laughs> <laughs> and that will just sit on top. And clicking into a um, a Kato thing, and Click. you have it dr driving around an N-scale track. So you can have an N-scale Kato Melbourne track. That's right. That's right. Because they do really good train layouts, don't they? Absolutely. The Kato yep. train layouts. 
Yeah. And that would plugger would would look at home there, wouldn't he? Yes. Yes. And it's a Melbourne W class. When did I do that again? Did I write a, a date inside that? Well, you, you've written your name. You bloody spoiled it. HWSBJ November 2021. Jeez, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? I know, back when you had hair. Yeah. Not much more than now, but it was a little bit more. That's probably episode... A couple of strands. What was that? That would have been episode 68. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, Anthony's got a guess on the on the year. 1958. It is indeed. Let's go to the front oh, one. Oh, is it? It is. It is indeed. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're still waiting for a wait. Did yeah. I do this one? John P said thirteen twenty-four. What's that? Is lower. it lower than that? Lower. It's lower than thirteen twenty-four. So we got eleven hundred and thirteen twenty-four. Yeah. So it's between those. Yeah, between so those. So eight fifty is way too low. I got eleven fifty now. Higher. Higher. Eleven hundred. Higher. Higher. Ten fifty, much higher. Yes, they love this weight, don't they? So normal. Well, you said you wanted to talk about something. Yeah, I got other stuff to talk about. Well, you better get to it. Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be tea time soon. Nan's gonna, gonna be, be upset. It's gonna be midnight. That's gonna be time for Nan's four so o'clock meal. What were you meds. talking about before? I should start building a Mac. Uh, well, I actually started. I've been stitched up, yeah. So I started building this. This is a raccoon. And I was gonna show you something. Oh, of course. I've it's been got using a lady. my favorite 3D prison. Of, of course, it's got a lady in there. So there's a little lady. Okay, but <laughs> that's your excuse to build a Mac. <clears throat> I actually just that's... wanted. A scantily clad lady. I just wanted her head. I wanted to put her head did. inside it. Of course you did. Okay, so here's my dry assembled raccoon. Just the head. And as I pull this out, it's probably going to fall apart on me because none of this is glued. Why not? Hey, why? Why not? What do you mean? So there we go. Here's my raccoon. Whoops. So that's from the Kao Yokoyama Machining Krieger. Um, did you paint it already? No, it's not painted. It actually has a really nice nice finish to it. Finish I was to gonna it. talk about blue stuff and how I've used blue stuff with my modeling for this. So you'll see my tutorials before. So what I've done is I've got my figure here and I've only wanted the head, and so I've put the blue stuff around her head to make an impression. You leave an impression on me. I do. Okay, so you can see how this side here just cracks open so that you can actually remove the resin. Or input the resin so you squeeze the resin into here close it all up add some more until it's all filled up and then uv torch around it do it oh, i'm not going to do it now because Wait. what i've done is i'm going to show you an example of what it looks right. like when it's i've actually got a copy here there's uv resin here give yeah. me the torch no it's a bit messy mate what do you mean messy let's go are you sure have you got the torch there i have let's go okay so here is i'll start squirting it here's in. the copy and I've, I've sprayed some primer on it so you can see because otherwise it comes out perfectly clear and there is the original so it's pretty damn good now what You're i was going to put do... that back in the shop for sale are you? no so i wasn't <laughs> going to do it here because i was going to do a tutorial no let's do it here oh you can't because you can't actually do it in one shot because oh. the tutorial is going to talk about how you do thick items so this is actually quite thick now, if it you smells tried... quite offensive <laughs> Because what you'll find is because this blue stuff is a thermal plastic, so I normally put this in like boiling water. Okay, yes. so you boil out the water, you drop it in, and or it goes the microwave. All gooey. Oh, yeah, I don't know. So when you put in the resin, because it's so thick, resin actually heats up when it cures. Yes. And if you try to cure that all in one shot, it actually deforms the mold because it gets hotter than 100 degrees and actually starts melting. So I'm going to do a tutorial and show you how I do it. So you can't take molds of your hand? Well, you could if you can bear boiling water. No, no, but you can't put UV resin on your... Say I wanted to fix up my fingernail because I broke it, and I got some UV resin and put yep. it there, yep. and then put the UV lamp, it would probably burn. I don't think that amount of UV resin will get that hot. Oh. Something this thick will get that hot. Let's try it. No, because I don't want to destroy this. <laughs> so I'm going, to, I'm going to do a separate... Tutorial, right? So basically, all I do is I get UV resin and I quickly go around it and I cure it slowly. So, after one quick pass, and you can feel it's starting to harden up, after I've done the pass, I'll actually put this in the fridge. I'll put it in the fridge so this actually stiffens up a bit and it actually cools down in case the resin that I'm curing heats up. So, there's no chance of this outside actually melting at all. And it maintains the fidelity of the, the, 
Do you like that? Yeah. So that's what I've got I here. I just got these really old TDK ads in my head. <laughs> Fidelity. Yeah, I know. So basically, I'm going to trim this down. And it almost sounds and you'll notice inappropriate. That she, you see how she her neck is actually here and she's facing this way. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to cut her head off and reface it so that's facing the other way. Why would you do that? Because I feel like it. And What's she looking that, at? Hey? What's she looking at? I don't know yet. But you'll notice that the two-part mold, it has got a few of these. Like, this is flash, right? I'm going to have to cut that off and re-sculpt it a little bit. A bit of milli putt. Well, that's right. I'm going to be using green stuff to re-sculpt it a little bit. But that's pretty good for a very quick impression. You and that, that impression saves from using, you know, full silicon and stuff. So that's what I was going to talk about. Well, you did. Well, you and go. you did well. Thank you. We've had destroying it. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. I want to do it now. <laughs> no. Oh, I got you've a control. Already, you've, already control made, you. you've already made her head. So there you go. No, you've already made so her head. So that's what I'm up to. So we can go on, but I think we're running out of time. But we should get the actual weight, right? So I think you should get your scales and weigh it up. All right. Because I can't remember who was closest. It was around 1,300 something, wasn't it? It's between 1,100 and something else. Right. 1,100 and 1,300. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was going to talk about some of this guide hand stuff, but they can wait. What do we got? What do we got? We'll probably have to go to the overhead and zoom it out a bit. All right, so that's zeroed off. 1190. 1190. 1190. Who was close to that? Surreal was 1240. Ooh. I reckon someone had an 11 here somewhere. Yeah, somebody said 1100, 1150. 1199? 1199. 1160. Can't, can't guess now. 1190. Well, there you go. That was Thunder Turbine. It was closest. 1190. Yeah, so you got a bit closer. It was actually further away by doing the 0.75. Is it? But that's the closest guess. There, there we go. Thank you, everybody. Oh, you can go in the front one page. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Wow, that was an epic show. Everything from Lachlan. Hey, had Lachlan from Bendigo on come talk about the 2023 Bendigo Classic. Mm -hmm. If you can, put that in your calendar and come out and come racing with us. Mm -hmm. um, October 13th to 15th, that's going to be huge. 140 entries will be open. Mm. So we will be there all weekend. We'll Get into it. Live from the track. It's like a, it's got a festival for your foot. Yeah. Mm. Well, you bring that when you go racing. That's, that's right. right. And yeah, we've got a train show tomorrow. Train show starts tomorrow. That's correct. And then we'll be there on Sunday. That's right. So if you see us there, please introduce yourself and say hello. And I look forward to seeing the adventures of uh, Monty the X Max. I think Monty. He's, he's no longer in the building. Is Monty the Christian name? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yep. Monty it is. So Monty Bone Crusher and Monty. Bone Crusher and Monty. Monty. <laughs> look out for the adventures <laughs> on social medias of uh, a uh, solar flare colored X Max up to no good. Ah. Uh. There you go. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining Alrighty. us and watching us today. I show. hope you found it entertaining. We've covered a lot of material. We have. And let's see what comes in next week. I think next week's going to be even bigger. For sure. There's for something sure. that's just teetering on getting here super excited. Wow. No? Teetering. Teetering. Thanks very much, guys. That was episode 167. It was indeed. See you next week. Thanks again. See you later. Bye-bye.